So this is Moscow. This is the town I grew up in. It's a small college town in northern Idaho, and I never thought I'd come back. I spent 12 years of my life in this town, in one very specific community, which consisted of the church that my family went to, the school most of us attended, and various other businesses. So even though the town had allegedly 20,000 people, my world was much smaller than that. It was so small, in fact, that I remember times that I would give friends a ride home from school, and before I got home, my mother knew who had been in my car, because someone had seen it and called her to tell her. The list of bad experiences I had in this place goes on and on. I'm not here to air out dirty laundry or to provide my take on whatever new controversy may swirl around this town and the people in it. Those have their time and place, and this is not it. However, it is because of these experiences that I have deep-rooted trauma. I was mistreated time and time again by people who were placed in authority over me. Teachers, coaches, pastors, etc. It led me to a point of never trusting any authority figure whatsoever, which, as you can imagine, has caused problems later in my life. It has also led to mental health issues with anxiety, even to the point of getting panic attacks when I hear certain church songs from my childhood. Since I left Moscow in 2010, I've connected all of my negative experiences and traumas with the town itself. I would hesitate to go back and visit because of the physical reactions my body would give when I thought of being around this place and many of those people. Even to the point that if certain names or faces came across my social media feeds, it would send me into downward spirals of anxiety, panic attacks, and depression. I decided a year or two ago, while on a trip to Hawaii, that I would not allow any person or place to have that kind of power over me. But in order to do that, I needed to actually face what I'd been avoiding for so long. So I've come back here to do some healing. And I went back to those things and places that stirred up memories. I think that UPS truck is for me. Sure. I went on long drives right. through the back roads with my sister. Every time I've gone to Europe, I've done like What you learn in June? What? What prince? Prince. Prince. Read that again. Oh, Prince. <laughs> <laughs> I played basketball at the gym with my brother. by the house that I grew up in. This is such a trip, just driving this road that I used to drive every day, at least once a day, sometimes more. Crazy. It's not fully gravel anymore. Oh, now it's turned to gravel. It was gravel the entire time I was living here. That house did not used to be here. Kind of ruins the out in the middle of nowhere vibe. That's unfortunate. And it's so like vibrantly blue. Ugh. That one too. Oh, there's houses everywhere now. This place used to be empty. This is so weird. Okay, that there's a driveway right next to my old drive. This is, I don't know. This did not used to be here. This whole field is gone now. There's nobody here. There's a fence and everything. Crazy, man. What is that? Is that a goat? 
What is that thing? Oh, they got lots of dogs. So many dogs. Well, this is the house that I used to live in. Honestly, it's kind of sad seeing it like that. Seeing all the houses built up around it, like when I grew up, it felt like we were out in the middle of nowhere. Surrounded by farmer's fields, very few other houses around, and then a couple people built some stuff while we lived there, but then now it looks like there's just whole developments, whole neighborhoods going in around it, and that's just, I don't know, it leaves a sour taste in my mouth from what I remember. Oh well. It is what it is. It's what a lot is happening to a lot of this part of the country. It's just building more and more and more houses, so I'm not going to get upset about it, but it kind of taints the memories of my childhood. spend a lot of time with family on this trip. Three of my siblings live in Moscow currently, and I wanted to really focus on the time I spent with them and with their children, especially since it was Christmas time. I spent time with my sister's family in her little farmhouse on the hill overlooking the city. when I watched as my brother's kids helped their mom with preparations for Christmas. That's dangerous. I would hold on to it. I have a Morris. Yeah, but it might, it might like, knock the whole bowl off. But I also spent I plenty of time like snuggling it. with the new kitten that they were trying to name and having indoor snowball fights. Should you name him Buster Guy? Yes! We spent Christmas morning opening gifts before going to my brother's in-laws for a feast. So much of this healing happens in situations off camera, long conversations with people, siblings or old friends, that help me fully realize that what I experienced was valid and they don't think of me any less for it. They're willing to have disagreements but not let those affect the relationship, which is something that 10 years ago was not always the case. I had lunch with someone that I had known from my time here and he encouraged me as I'm on this healing journey to find things to be thankful for. And as I thought about that, I realized that both in my time here, throughout my teenage years, and the past couple of weeks, there have been many good things that I had overlooked because of the negative things that I had experienced. One of the best things was the community here, 
While it had its flaws, it was something that I haven't seen anywhere since living here. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that my life in Albania can get very lonely. It's hard to fit in and make strong friendships. That's something that the people in Moscow do well, and I'm thankful to have experienced that once. Also, I'm thankful for the education I received there. While much of it does not apply to anything in my current life, I do have a well-rounded, diverse knowledge. And even though I was mistreated by teachers in that school time and time again, it shouldn't reflect negatively on what I did glean from my time there. I've made the mistake over the last 13 years of associating my trauma with a particular place because that's where I lived when the trauma happened. But it very likely has nothing to do with a particular place or with the people that live in this place. I can definitely tie it back to a few particular individuals and situations, but to write off an entire town and region because of that is immature and illogical. I've realized that not all of my experiences are indicative of the way everyone else experiences this place. Especially now, 13 years later, give or take. This trip was good for me. It was exactly what I needed to be able to release myself from the hold that my childhood trauma had on me. <laughs> and while this is just the first step in my healing journey, it was the hardest and the biggest one to take. Thanks for sticking with me. I'll be back soon.